Hey, what is up everyone? Kellerian here bringing you another video, and this time I would like to talk about gathering, specifically meat gathering. After I pen rouletted my gear and kind of quit BDO for a little bit, I came back and became mainly a life skill player. And honestly, butchering has kind of carried me through making a lot of silver. And I just wanted to kind of introduce that to newer players as well. So this is going to go over the primary spots that you can gather meat, whether you want to sell that directly to the market or use it for imperial cooking. So hopefully this gun gives you all an overview and I'll go over uh, mastery gear a little bit as well, but let's go ahead and move on into it. The first thing that I want to do is address the drop table of butchering as a whole. First and foremost, obviously meat. Uh, the five meats that we're going to be talking about here is wolf and deer meat, which can be interchangeable, snake meat, lion meat, and scorpion. I'm going to show the different spots that are available as well for each of those locations and the rotations that I personally use for them. But uh, we're also going to talk about the other items that you get while gathering or, or butchering as a whole. The primary things that you want to look out for as far as butchering, and one of the reasons why I typically encourage butchering as the first thing to start gathering or possibly fluid collecting, but is because of black gem fragments. Black gem fragments can be converted into black gems and in turn concentrated black gems, which is used to enhance your Manos gear for life skilling gear as a whole. So this allows you to do your own self enhancement. The next thing that you're going to be seeing kind of as a rare drop from, uh, from doing butchering as a whole is sharps and hards. These can be found through any kind of gathering, but you get an okay amount whenever it comes to butchering. Sharps and hards are obviously used to make concentrated stones for whether, rather the, either enhancing your armor or enhancing your weapon or making the Manos gear or enhancing the Manos gear later on as well. Other little tidbits of things that you can get which kind of add to the amount of silver that you make with gathering are things like the Deep Blue Hoof Root, which is a tier 9 horse material. Lila's Petals, or Layla's Petals, which are used for basically getting a fairy companion, uh, which you can basically turn into pure silver as well. And then you also get quite a bit of fairy dust or fairy powder. This is just a vendor item which just adds your overall value to, or adds to the overall value whenever you are doing the butchering as a whole. The last item that you're actually going to be getting is going to be uh, spirit dust. Spirit dust is actually super useful because you can convert five of those into a Kafra stone, which is just another thing that you can add a decent bit of silver to your overall gathering. Like normally in one gather session, I end up making around 20 million silver purely from the spirit dust that I get. The whole. I personally think butchering is the number one thing to do as far as starting out with life skilling because it's so useful in so many like avenues and you get materials that are necessary for doing your own self enhancing or possibly is the most profitable uh, just form of gathering with being able to sell directly to the marketplace. If you ever post meat straight to the marketplace whether that be with lion meat whether that be with snake meat even even your deer and your wolf which is more common all of those are almost guaranteed to sell at least currently at max price the first location that i'm going to show everybody is my tried and true location this is where i go to farm pretty much all of my meat unless i need a different kind of meat for valencia meals but this is wolves southwest of velia known as agra steps this is the main rotation and if you can ever secure it go for it i am going to be just clearing through all the wolves at this point um, kind of just to show you the overall rotation and one thing to know whenever it comes to gathering every class has their own you know variety of skills and what you can end up reaching so you have to do your own little bit of testing and whatnot to kind of min max this rotation a lot of times as well you do need to kind of catch a couple of the wolves on the side uh, otherwise if you are being very efficient with your rotation usually if, if you're just going for the big pack after big pack there won't be enough like they won't all be spawned but i also want to show kind of where i place my tent each time to kind of complete the overall rotation at this point the wolves next to the rock should be back up 
But let's take a look and let me show you on the map where this is at. So you see Velia Southwest. If you scroll in a little bit, you can actually auto path right to where I'm clicking and it'll take you right there. Next up, we're gonna be checking out the secondary rotation as far as wolves go. All right, so with the second rotation, this is known as the Forest of Seclusion. Just south here of the Tuscany farm, you see kind of where I marked at as far as where I put my uh, my tent up. This is a good rotation if the other uh, aforementioned location is like contested. I actually initially grinded here almost exclusively until I was told about the Agra Steps location, which does have wider or larger wolf packs with a little bit less movement. Usually what you end up seeing here is getting, you know, quite a few one to two packs, but then there are several sizable packs of, you know, four or five wolves at a time. Like I said, this is really going to be your secondary location as far as getting uh, wolf meat, which, like I said, I personally prefer wolf meat. It's closer to Hydell, which is kind of my, my base of operations with everything. And this is a good spot if the primary route is being taken. Lots of two packs, uh, still getting, you know, same wolf meat. Overall, this would extend your overall energy usage a tiny bit. You know, if you want your, your gathering to last a bit, little bit longer without using potions or energy potions, this is a good secondary choice. Uh, and sometimes you get lucky where low levels will even kill stuff for you and you don't even have to kill it. But yeah, this is a secondary location. Use it as a backup. The next location we're going to take a look at is deer. Deer is a personal favorite for a lot of classes who have the ability to group up uh, large groups of mobs. Where you find this is south of Bear, which is far south of Calpheon. Deer has the benefit of being a very, very fast respawn rate uh, mob or like group essentially and so any classes that have okay mobility because you do see that they're a little bit spread out but primarily the ability to either aoe or group things up uh, things like shies do all right here guardians musas uh, valkyrie this is definitely a very very strong location because you have the ability to pull a large pack of mobs into one spot and then you know kill them right for for butchering as a tamer this isn't my favorite spot because there is so much like movement involved even though tamer is a fairly mobile class but i don't have really anything that that sucks in large groups of mobs making it easy to gather but if you are one of those types of classes this is definitely a competitive location and if you're looking to sell directly to the marketplace Typically, deer has a slightly higher value in comparison to that of wolf. So if you're looking to burn through energy and kill a lot of mobs, deer is definitely a good place. Our next location actually covers both snake meat and scorpion meat, as both of them are located on this route. This is found south of Tashir Ruins, which is far northeast of uh, Dubinkrin, or far south of Hydel, and this is in the Dregan region. This area basically gives you uh, two snake meat for every one scorpion meat, and that actually works out perfectly because if you're cooking for imperial meals, that is basically the exact ratio you need typically when making a Valencia meal. This route is a little bit wider spread. There's a little bit of movement incorporated with it, but it's typically not contested all too much because of that. And then you just have to kind of get in the rhythm of you or of kind of cycling through uh, this kind of larger area, which this is actually a very, very profitable location as well. There are pretty much always pre-orders on both snake meat and scorpion meat because people don't typically enjoy farming this route. But the nice thing is, is whenever you incorporate a lot of movement into like kind of going from point a to point b the value of the meat is typically higher so i believe uh snake meat if i'm not mistaken is like 13k per or or like 12.5k per and then scorpion is also higher value than that of both deer and wolf blood as you can see it is kind of just like a circular rotation and I would strongly recommend this if you want to have your energy last a little bit longer than it would with deer or with wolves. 
Our final location is going to be lions. These are found west of Ancado Harbor or northwest of Valencia. You'll see on the map specifically where I'm at at this point, west of the node. Typically you want to place your tent so you kind of get an idea of where you started because there is a lot of movement whenever it comes to this. This kind of has the same um, style with, with deer where the mobs are a little bit more spread out in comparison. So you have to do a little bit of more like grouping up, tagging the mobs. So it is helpful if you are a ranged uh, or have some form of range. A lot of the times people will actually utilize their horse. Um, like you could have a ranger alt or something along those lines that can actually ride from point A to point B. It is more of kind of like a square rotation, but as you can see with the amount of movement that's required and grouping that's required, this is typically your uh, least occupied location whenever it comes to meat farming. This will massively prolong your energy. So if you don't want to be using energy pots, but you want to maximize the amount of silver you're getting for you know your one grind session per day, Lion Meat is on a constant pre-order um, and max price at 14.6 thousand silver per piece. And so this ends up being a very, very profitable location. You do have to be a tiny bit careful actually when farming these because if you are using your mastery gear which has that you know basically no armor no dp at all then you actually can die to these mobs so be a little bit careful while you are grouping them up as you see i'm kind of making that square rotation we're aiming to tag basically the large packs of lions as well as the cubs included uh, both of which yield you the same amount of meat and everything along those lines with meat you're going to be starting out by getting a maximum of eight meat per if you don't have the mastery but after that like myself with a tier four hedgehog i can get upwards towards 20 meat per gather which would end up being almost 300,000 silver from a single gather on these lions. This location being basically past the desert near Valencia makes it also a location where you typically you'd want to put an alt instead of running up there yourself every single time. Another just quick tidbit, when if you're trying to auto path to this location, you actually have to be very careful that you're in real gear because Gaha's bandits, which you'll run through, will sometimes kill you. I've had this happen multiple times. So you've seen the full routes at, these, at this point for all the different nodes. I'm going to go ahead and now talk a little bit about mastery gear and how that affects your gear. Before we get into specifically how to obtain mastery gear, let's talk a little bit about what mastery actually is. Mastery, much like you see with like AP and DP as you progress through and can fight stronger and stronger monsters, mastery is the progression of life skilling as far as uh, gathering goes. What this ends up doing is it basically allows you to obtain larger amounts or more consistently larger amounts of materials as well as a higher chance to actually proc getting better materials. Things like those deep blue hoof fruits that we were talking about or the, or the spirit dust or you know even just more meat as a whole. Starting out, a person can only get eight meat per one gather at this point, like I mentioned earlier, I can get up to 20 meat in one singular gather. This is how you scale up and gradually make more and more money. Most people starting out just by butchering and using, you know, selling directly to the market, you can still end up netting yourself 50 to 60 million silver per hour just starting the game. But now at this point, if I actually go for a full hour of gathering, even using energy potions, I'm making upwards towards 150 to 180 million silver per hour with a little bit of luck. It's pretty insane, and it gives life skillers that actual sense of gear progression um, that AP and DP players or you know grinding players get as well. Before running off and causing mass genocide to the wolves and the deers of Black Desert Online, we want to prep ourselves for doing the butchering life skill. The first thing I want to address is buffs. 
Uh, buffs are extremely important because they increase the overall experience that you're typically going to be getting, which in turn basically increases mastery because you get five mastery per level of your life skill. And then on top of that, it basically gives you a higher gathering level. The higher gathering level means that you're gathering quicker. The first thing that we want to look at is Seafood Cron Meal. Seafood Cron basically gives you plus two to gathering, 10% life XP, and then it sits on for 90 minutes, so it's pretty nice in that regard. Next, we're going to take a look at the Life Spirit Stone. This is a Spirit Stone that's equipable, and you can purchase it from the marketplace, which the primary function of this is to get basically that additional gathering, but also the 11% increased gathering drop rate. This is extremely important to maximizing the amount of silver that you're going to be making while doing your butchering, basically increasing the chance that you're going to obtain greens and blues. Lastly is the Verger Elixir. Verger Elixir is, is very, very nice, not a necessity per se, but it is very nice to con uh, consistently use because it does give you an additional 20% life XP. And if you need that last plus one for gathering and just overall time efficiency, I run those three buffs pretty much every single time I gather, even at the level that I'm currently at. Now that we've addressed the buffs, let's go ahead and move forward and talk about the tools that you'll be getting. I'm only going to address the starting process as far as getting tools because I don't want to go too, too far into depth with the higher up Logia and Manos butcher knives because that I think you'll figure that out along the way. This is intended to get you started. First, we're going to start off with a dull butcher knife. The dull butcher knife can be obtained from any material vendor that you find in major cities, in Velia, in Heidel, and this is going to carry you for a very, very short amount of time. The dull butcher knife is basically there purely to get you to beginner 10. At this point, you can switch on over and get yourself a steel butcher knife. This will decrease the amount of time it takes for you to gather a little bit and basically utilize this to get up to skilled five. Skilled five is really when the magic starts happening, no pun intended, because you obtained the magic butcher knife. What's so important about the magic butcher knife as a whole is that it is a, it is an item that gives you mastery equivalent to 650 rating or 650 mastery. That means that you're going to be yielding higher meat results and more rare drops uh, from this point on up until you obtain yourself a Logia butcher knife and start enhancing that using the black gem fragments that you've been obtaining while leveling up your, your butchering as a whole um, and hopefully eventually reaching that pinnacle point of switching over to a Manos. But once again, the key here is that you do not want to switch off of using magic butcher knives up until you are obtaining over 650 mastery. To achieve that threshold, let's take a look at where you obtain Logia gear first. You get Logia gear west of, of Velia at Logia Farm, which can be purchased from this vendor for 1 million silver per item. The thing is, is to achieve the 650 mastery, you're actually going to need a full set of Logia gear, that being the Logia uh, gathering clothes, the Logia butcher knife, and full Logia accessories, all of which you actually need to get it uh, to at least a try status and either the clothes or the tool at Tet if you're pushing somewhere around Professional 4 to break over that 650 threshold. It's a gradual process, and in my opinion, it is one of the more rewarding ways to play Black Desert because it's not like super intensive on your hand, and you still get that full like sense of progression and gradual growth. Eventually, you might be able to you know push your way up into Mano Skier and get the like crazy amounts of silver I've been able to obtain without burning myself and just gathering pretty consistently while doing cooking as well. It is possible, it's just a matter of making sure that you're consistent, and that's really what all Black Desert is about. Alright guys, well, it's that time, it's the end of the video. Hopefully you all found it in enjoyable, hopefully you all found it entertaining, um, and informational as a whole. 
you know, I, I know that my upload schedule has been really inconsistent, but I, I'm going to try and kind of be a little bit more consistent and give everybody more, you know, more information in this game that we've all been really enjoying. Um, you know, if you enjoyed the video, if you found it informational, a like, a comment, anything like that helps. But thank you all very much for watching, and I'll catch you all next time. Peace, peace.